Hi scholars! This week we're going to be reviewing 6th grade biology. 7th grade is mostly going to be about biology, so remembering the stuff that we already learned about biology this year at the beginning of the school year is going to really help you start 7th grade science strong. If this stuff seems familiar to you, that's great. And if it doesn't, that's cool too. We're going to be using this video to review the main topics of all of the biology that we covered this school year. Hope you guys enjoy! To start off, we need to remember that all living things are made of cells. Let's practice that by asking ourselves this question. Is it made of cells? So we have this puppy. Is a puppy living? Yes. So is it made of cells? Yes. How about cacti? Are cacti living? If you said yes, then the answer to is it made out of cells is also yes. Bacteria. Those are living too. So those are made out of cells. Butterflies. Living. Made out of cells. Me and my boyfriend. Living. Made out of cells. You also might remember that we talked about the terms biotic and abiotic. Biotic is a synonym for living. Abiotic means non-living. What about things that are dead? In science, biotic or living refers to living things and once living things. So, dead things are also biotic. Biotic things are made of cells. Abiotic things are not made of cells. The next topic we talked about was classification. All living things are put into different groups based on the characteristics that they share. This system of naming and classifying different organisms based on their shared characteristics is called taxonomy, which is a branch of biology. We use classification by characteristics all the time in our everyday lives. For example, if I'm going to the grocery store and I'm thinking that I want to buy some tater tots, I'm not going to wander the whole grocery store to look for those tater tots. I'm going to narrow down the area that I go to in the grocery store based on the characteristics that I know about tater tots. Tater tots are frozen food, so I'm going to start my search in the frozen food aisle. There may be many frozen food aisles and from there I can narrow down my search further by looking for the area that has frozen vegetables or frozen potatoes versus looking at all of the single family meals or ice creams. We use characteristics in biology to characterize or to classify are different organisms. The first determining characteristic that we look at is whether or not an organism's cells have a nucleus. If the answer is no, that means the organism is prokaryotic. Its cell does not have a nucleus. You can see a picture of a prokaryotic cell here. If a cell does have a nucleus, and our answer is yes, that means that the cell or the organism is eukaryotic. If you look at this picture here, you can see the nucleus is labeled. I think the nucleus looks kind of like an eyeball. The nucleus stores all of the DNA in a nice organized way. Versus in prokaryotic cells, the DNA is all clumped up and tangled together. In eukaryotic cells, they are stored in a nucleus. The next characteristic that we look at is how many cells is it made out of. If the organism is only made out of one cell, that means it is unicellular. Remember, the prefix uni means one just like unibrow or unicycle, unicellular has one. If 
the organism is made out of more than one cell, it's called multicellular. Multicellular organisms are made out of many cells. Quick tip is that if you can see an organism without a microscope, it is multicellular. The next thing that we use to classify is how an organism gets its energy. If it consumes other organisms, that means it's a heterotroph. Consumers and decomposers both have to consume or use other organisms' nutrients in order to survive. On the other hand, autotrophs can make their own energy using non-living things. For example, plants use sunlight and water, both abiotic factors in their environment, to make their sugar. They're called producers. Producers are autotrophs. The last characteristic that we're going to look at is how organisms reproduce. One of the characteristics of life is the ability to reproduce, and organisms can reproduce in two different ways. The first way is asexually. In asexual reproduction, there's only one parent. That parent can split itself and make two identical offspring cells. Personally, I like to think of asexual reproduction as cloning the parent. The next type of reproduction is called sexual reproduction. That's when there are two parents. Those two parents combine their DNA to make their offspring. That's how in humans, when we have two parents, we have traits that are similar to both parents and not exactly like either one. Moving on, we're going to use those characteristics to put our organisms into domains and kingdoms. Domains are the broadest level of classification, which means this is the equivalent of a produce section or the frozen section. They're the big categories. The big categories for classifying organisms are bacteria, archaea, and eukarya. Bacteria are prokaryotic, which means they do not have a nucleus. Archaea are prokaryotic and they live in extreme environments. That means extremely hot or cold temperatures, acidic, places where you wouldn't expect organisms to survive, archaea can go there. Oddly enough, archaea do have some similarities with eukarya, but we're not going to really talk about that right now. Eukarya is a huge domain as well. All eukaryotic organisms belong in domain eukarya. From there, we have smaller sections of our different domains. In the domain bacteria, we have the kingdom eubacteria. In the domain archaea, we have the kingdom archaebacteria. And in the domain eukarya, we actually have four different kingdoms, animalia, plantae, protista, and fungi. Here are our six kingdoms. Remember, we have one kingdom in the domain bacteria, one kingdom in the domain archaea, and four kingdoms in the domain eukarya. This infographic shows the different characteristics of organisms in each of the six kingdoms. I'm not going to read you every single characteristic, but this would be a good place to pause your video and review some of the characteristics that go in each kingdom. All right, let's summarize. All living things whether they're unicellular protista, bacteria, or archaea, or whether they're multicellular mushrooms, dogs, dolphins, butterflies, etc., all living things are made out of cells. These cells can either be eukaryotic or prokaryotic, depending on whether or not we have a nucleus. 
Cells that have a nucleus are eukaryotic. Cells that don't have a nucleus are prokaryotic. Another characteristic that we need to remember is the number of cells. If an organism is made out of one cell, it is unicellular. If an organism is made out of many cells, it is multicellular. Another important factor that we need to remember is how organisms get their energy. Organisms that make their own energy are called autotrophs. They use non-living things like water and sunlight or other inorganic chemicals to make their own energy. On the other hand, heterotrophs have to consume other organisms in order to survive. We use those characteristics to classify organisms into categories using the system called taxonomy. The broadest level of classification is called domain. There are three domains, bacteria, archaea, and eukarya. Within each domain, we have kingdoms. In the domain of bacteria, we have the kingdom eubacteria. In the domain archaea, we have the kingdom archaebacteria. The other four kingdoms, protista, animalia, plantae, and fungi, belong in the domain eukarya because they're eukaryotic. Hopefully this video wasn't too confusing or difficult because we already covered this topic earlier in the school year. Before we go, I wanted to give a couple quick shout outs to Ilyana and Angel T for really turning in excellent work above my expectations during our virtual learning days. Make sure you're keeping up with the stuff on Google Classroom and answering the questions linked on the assignment so that you can get credit for your work this week. Till next week, bye!